नमस्कार आई एम प्रोफेसर सी बी शर्मा फ्रॉम द स्कूल ऑफ एजुकेशन इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी एंड अ फॉर्मर चेयरमैन ऑफ द नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ओपन स्कूलिंग आई इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ एज अ फॉर्मर चेयरमैन बिकॉज दिस गेव मी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वर्क कॉन्स्टेंटली विद द नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी that we started working on in 2015 i will be talking about changing the structure of education and institutional restructuring in india in spite of decades of working on school education elementary education why were 20 million children out of school a sub committee of the central advisory board on education was constituted and i had the privilege to be a member of that we went around the country talked to parents children secretaries officials and tried to find out why are so many children out of school the first fact that came to our notice was we were not providing education in the language of the children after months and years of education they did not understand anything it was surprising and amazing that no one really took note of it or even if it was noticed no one really did anything about it the first restructuring that we have suggested and which has been accepted as a policy is that every child would be provided education in mother tongue in the very early years more than 150 languages will be developed as medium of instruction for the first 5 years that we have suggested as the foundation the second very important thing that this policy suggests and will be which will be a landmark change is that we will bring children to school at the age of 3 we started schooling at the age of 6 and by the time children came to school they have lost so many hours of learning the children of the rich and the affluent went to some play school some day care center at the age of 3 but where were the children of the poor the less privileged the differently able perhaps wasting their time it's not that the government didn't understand this the government could notice it and that is why the government had started icds integrated child development scheme but we put the children in centers where we had workers who did not understand pedagogy who did not help children learn at this age the second very important recommendation of this policy is that we will convert all anganwadis into teaching learning centers and all the workers will be converted into pedagogues by giving them adequate training i am sure this will change the face of education in india it has not been a level playing field for all children the children of the less privileged have been out of the net perhaps by some design and why is this remember our prime minister sri narendra modi ji addressed the parliament for the very first time on 11 june 2014 after becoming prime minister that was the thanksgiving to the president's speech and he had talked about education a number of times during his 54 minute speech to the parliament and expressed his concern that we emphasize on education or literacy or teaching of computer science but that only privileged could make use of our children from the villages the less privileged the poor have lagged behind this policy changes that and he had also mentioned can we not reach good education to the children through technology so now we were not trying to develop our best students into computer software engineers but we were trying to reach or use computer or ict to reach education to the less privileged the village people the policy suggests a complete restructuring of the school education in the sense that the school structure which was 10 plus 2 till now on the basis of the recommendation of kothari commission it will be 
plus three plus three plus four. I'm trying to rush with the school structure because mainly I want to uh, emphasize on what is going to change in higher education. But as the Radha Krishnan Commission has said, we cannot bring about massive changes in higher education without changing the school education. The foundation that we have called, which will be of five years, will give equal opportunity to all children of the country, rich or poor, and help them be in the school, retain in the school, and then give them equal opportunity through education in the mother tongue to go ahead. There are massive other recommendations for school education, but I will leave it for you to read the policy and understand for yourself. I must mention something in passing. It's one of the shortest policy that India ever had. After Macaulay's minutes, which is about nine pages, this is only 62 pages. Must read it. Must read it. It's a document worth reading, which will change the face of not only education in India, but India itself. Higher education has been a priority of this nation ever since 1947. But look at the documents, look at the minutes of Congress, look at other commissions before independence and all of them emphasized on increasing or emphasizing on primary education because that is the foundation. And what Prime Minister said on 7th of August to the teachers that primary must be given emphasis. If children are not retained in primary education, how will they come up and how will they go up in higher education? Only 26.3% of the relevant age group is in higher education today. Why? Because we have not done enough in school education and we should have done it in 1947. Instead of having a commission on elementary education, foundation education, we established a commission for higher education that was Radha Krishnan Commission and Radha Krishnan Commission exactly said this that we cannot really make a change in higher education unless and until we change the school education. This policy and does what previous decades of governance of education have not done. And it aspires to have 50% participation of the relevant age group by 2035-40. How do we intend to do it? The most important recommendation is that we will have a very novel, innovative system of teacher education. Even though teachers serve the school, but they are trained and educated in higher education, this policy says we will have a completely new structure of teacher education. Instead of two years of teacher education, we will have four years of teacher education. The obvious question is, who will go into teacher education after class 12 and how will they afford it? If teacher education becomes four years at par with engineering or medical, then how would students bear the cost and go in teacher education or aspire to become teachers? This policy says we will have four year teacher education after class 12 and we will admit students on the basis of a national aptitude test after class 12 and what Gandhi said in 1937 in the Vardha scheme that we hope girls from the rural areas will outperform boys. I, I, I'm sure you will know that there are nearly 62 boards in India, school boards. And in every board, girls outperform boys. But where do they get lost in higher education? We hope that after the 12th exam, when they appear for aptitude test for, to become teachers, girls will again outperform boys and they will get into teacher education in massive numbers. So the policy also suggests that all those who take admission into teacher education on the basis of the number of teachers will require four years down the line, every student who takes admission will get a scholarship. If we have been saying all the time that the future of a nation is nurtured in schools, why not spend on schools? So the Second, very important recommendation is that we will 
give a scholarship to every student who takes admission into teacher education program and we expect by 2035 we'll have a whole army of teachers in the school who will be well trained and would understand the importance of a good teacher and they will take care of our children by 2040 which this policy says we'll again establish a new committee to look into fresh recommendations we expect that our schooling will be at par or in competition with the best systems of the world so after school education the second most important recommendation is about teacher education however we made a folly we established single discipline institutions and thousands of teacher education institutions were started read 15.2 of the policy on the basis or replicating what the justice ts verma commission which was set up on the recommendation of the supreme court had said that there are about 10000 teacher education colleges which practically sell degree for money and they have absolutely no teaching learning this policy says we'll close down all that we'll have colleges which are multidisciplinary and which justify their existence so what will happen all colleges will be converted into multidisciplinary we have a long history of the idea of a university a university graduate cannot be myopic in vision can know only about one discipline and call oneself a graduate so this policy says all institutions must be multidisciplinary and every student must learn about some other disciplines cognate disciplines so even if there is a student of education who intends to become a teacher should know something about science something about environment something about politics and then combine all that to become a good teacher so all institutions will become multidisciplinary i am sure you will read the policy and understand that details of it what has been said i am i am running against time i have very little time to to do mention all this so i am rushing through third very important recommendation is that there have been number of statutory bodies in higher education i am sure you understand the importance of statutory bodies these are created on the basis of the recommendation or the, or through an act of the parliament or state legislature they derive their powers from parliament or state legislature like take the take the example of national council for teacher education it is created through an act of parliament so when the nct regulates on something it's mandatory for all institutions in teacher education to follow them the impact has been or implication has been that nct has continuously changed its regulations on pressures from outside there is no harm in accepting this because the policy itself in 15.2 accepts that we have institutions which sell degrees for money so what is the remedy this policy says we will convert the university grants commission into higher education commission of india which will have four verticals more or less four departments one of them will be regulatory one understanding is that regulations were made and implemented by the same agency or accredited or the institution were accredited by the same agency so when there was a pressure on the regulatory framework the regulations were changed to accommodate institutions or people so the higher education commission of india will have four verticals one of them will be regulatory which will be light but tight which will be small they will have consultants they will have bodies from outside to regulate about various other areas like we have statutory bodies for teacher education all india council for te um, technical education we have architecture council we have animal husbandry council and so forth they will all be closed through the same process they were created the acts will have to go to the parliament or the state legislatures and be repealed and the powers of these will be merged into the regulatory framework of the higher education commission of india the second vertical will be of accreditation which will accredit and 
ensure that all the regulations made are fulfilled and followed by institutions. The implication would be that the regulatory will not be in the process of accrediting and accrediting body will not be in the process of regulating, which will give more credence and transparency. The third vertical will be of financing. I am sure we have not yet got this, but it's, it's for all of us to dis, uh, discuss and give our suggestions. What should be this policy like? Which institutions should get more money? For what activities? New institutions? Old institutions? Institution performing very well or what? So the third will be finance. Fourth will be the General Education Council which will decide on curriculum, quality and similar other aspects of education. So the University Grants Commission which was created as a statutory body just to take care of the finances because it's a grants commission. It did not really have the powers to regulate but then in due course of time it acquired those powers. A few things that we must as teachers highlight and discuss is most of the countries which have done very well in education have very little interference of the government. Look at Finland, look at the United Kingdom. The bodies which regulate education, the bodies which accredit institutions are entirely free of government interference. We need to examine the recommendations of the National Education Policy 2020 and we must also keep discussing. A very important recommendation which has been made is about forming or establishing a National Research Foundation, NRF. In fact, the Finance Minister has already mentioned in her finance speech in 2021 and given 50,000 crores for research in the next five years. Higher education is about good education and research. We have lagged behind in research. I'm sure you will yourself read about National Research Foundation and discuss, deliberate and make recommendations about what should be the structure, how should it work and how should it work transparently. People, teachers keep telling about their displeasure with the award of uh, research grants or similar other grants, we must work on it now. Similarly, a major recommendation of this policy is granting autonomy to institution on the basis of their engagement in various activities. We are a large country, country of villages and we cannot really expect all institutions to be teaching and research institution. This policy says we will have three categories of institutions. One will be teaching institution, the second will be teaching and research and third will be research institutions. So the larger universities perhaps and universities with a small postgraduate department will become research institution, research intensive. But those in the villages and rural areas will become teaching universities. How will it happen? The policy says that every institution will have its own board of governors, read chapter 19, which will manage. The clear indication of the policy is that at the moment the, the decision making process is erroneous. Who decides about appointments? Who decides on the appointment of the head of the institution? People who are not really involved or stakeholder of the institution. So it says, the head of the institution in collaboration with similar other stakeholders will decide and identify the chief operating officer of the head of the institution, whether that is a small or big institution. And this will be done by the board of governors. What will be the board of governors consist, consist of? The stakeholders, those who are experts of the area. Say, in a college, the, perhaps the principal and 
the the members of the uh, governing board like some parents some students some pass out students some experts of the area and similar other people who have a stake in the institution i hope i make a point that at the moment the committees which select the head of the institution have nothing to do with that institution which has perhaps come under criticism and which perhaps will be changed in the times to come we hope that the complete structure from the kindergarten the preschool to doctoral level will change and that is why it has been suggested that the undergraduate program will no more be of water tight three years if a child completes first year of the undergraduate one will get a certificate and what if one likes to leave can go out work for some time come back complete the second year will get a diploma after two years equivalent to the itis or similar other diplomas if one completes three years will get a degree and if one completes four years one will get a honors degree there can be five year integrated undergraduate postgraduate program there can be the fifth year when the child who is working or who is studying a performing area say like dance can go practice submit a report and get a masters degree similarly the mphil program will be discontinued and we will have admission directly to the phd program invariably it has been found that those who do an mphil and a phd repeat the same or in enlarge the mphil dissertation perhaps that's a waste of time and also resources it's a very considered scheme which has been recommended read radha krishnan commission radha krishnan commission had already talked about it right back in 1950 that this is already practiced in the us universities which have done very well it's only surprising why did we not do this in all these decades i must conclude by saying the national education policy 2020 is a very considered well drafted and presented document which will change the face of education of this country it will not only change the structure of schooling the higher education but it will also change the character of the product we will have less wastage and perhaps those who come out will not be seeking for jobs i have not been able to really discuss the the changes that we are going to bring about in academic vocational curricular co curricular read read the first three three chapters and you will find out for yourself this policy will change the face of this country i will end by saying what the prime minister said on the floor of the parliament on 11 june 2014 we need to completely overhaul education we need to bring the poor center stage we must gear change gear to make our system more appropriate for them for those who work with hand for those who want to learn to earn instead what we have done is we have given degrees we have given education to ask for job that will not happen 2035 the last line of the policy says we will implement nearly all of these recommendations by 2030 10 years we'll watch the implications of these and 2040 we will have a new commission i hope and what the prime minister said on 7th of august 24, 2020 when he was addressing the teachers after the launch or the or the approval or the, of this policy by the cabinet this policy is a national policy which the government has given but then it will be successful only if the teachers own it it is your policy and i reiterate or reverberate what the prime minister said it is our policy we have to see to it that this is implemented in letter and spirit so that we have a completely new bharat 2040 जैसा प्रधानमंत्री जी ने कहा यह इंडिया सेंट्रिक नहीं ये भारत केंद्रित नीति है हमें पुनः एक बार इस नीति के माध्यम से इंडिया नहीं भारत बनाना है और यह नीति ऐसी नीति है कि यह इंडिया को भारत बनाएगी जहां हर कोई 
हाथ से काम करने का इच्छुक होगा और जो पढ़ा लिखा होगा वो काम मांगने नहीं जाएगा वो काम देगा आइए हम सब मिलकर इसको बढ़िया बनाएं और इसको सफल बनाएं हम सब का सहयोग होगा तभी होगा बहुत बहुत आभार बहुत धन्यवाद कि आपने इतने ईमानदारी से सुना और समय दिया नमस्कार जय हिंद जय भारत